There's a revival category on the Tonys for a reason. I left in the interval. The cast recording is played hard in this house. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Is that what that song goes like? Happy New Year! Hello my little friends, how are you? I hope you're very, very well. I hope that you are having a great day. So, I just filmed a video that was my top 10 shows of the decade. My favourite shows from 2010 to 2019. Um, and as I was going through my playlists on my phone and all my cast recordings, I was like, hmm, there's some shows here that, my goodness, aren't they forgotten? And some of them, for good reason. And some of them, it's very sad. So I thought that I would talk about them. Some of these shows, I love some of these shows. I don't. Some of these shows I've not seen. But I thought I would just talk about them. And these are the forgotten shows of the last decade. Coming in at number one. These are in no particular order, by the way. But coming in at number one is Stephen Ward, the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. I never saw it. Loads of my friends did. And everyone I've spoken to who ever saw it said I left in the interval. Why? But they were like, it's hands down the worst thing I've ever seen. I never saw it. So, I don't know, but they said it was the worst thing they'd ever seen. They said that they didn't know why it was a show. It was sexist and bland and horrid and a very strange thing. And I think I was scrolling through lists of musicals and it came across it and I was like, isn't it good that that's forgotten? No one talks about it anymore. Apart from when I talk to someone and I say, what's the worst musical you ever saw? And they all say, Stephen Ward. I had to include it, what can I say? Itchy boob. The next one that had to be forgotten was Viva Forever, the Spice Girls musical. Now again, a show I did not see. <laughs> this is gonna be like, wow. Um, why are you including these musicals, Amy? Because I want to, and it's my channel and I can do what I want. Yeah, the Spice Girls musical. Now, I heard mixed reviews about this. Some people I spoke to was like, that was a pile of trash. And some people were like, Viva Forever was great. I don't know, I feel like it could be like one of those shows, like some shows you just like because you like the music that it's based on or because it's kind of nostalgic to you. And you know, who doesn't love the Spice Girls? Girl power. But Viva Forever had a short life and it's sad. I always think it's sad with shows when they don't kind of have a future life because obviously whoever wrote them and whatever you want to say about them, people always put in their heart and their, you don't write a musical lazily just like throw it up there because musicals are hard to write. And I always think whoever's in that, whether it be the actors who, it might be their West End debut or tech person who loves the Spice Girls or the writer who spent hours and hours coming up with the story and the music and the arrangements and stuff. No matter what, people have put their time and, and hard work into shows. So, you know, you always have to think about that. And that's why I'm talking about ones that I've forgotten. But as I say, some of these shows I love. So so they're just forgotten shows of the decade. Okay, the next one I'm going to include is Something Rotten. It's a show that I didn't see but I have devoured that cast recording. I think it's really sad actually that Something Rotten hasn't had a life in England because I think it would be so popular, especially with tourists. It's got the whole British thing with the Shakespeare thing. But it's also so funny and I think that the West End could really do with a show like that. We've not had anything kind of so overtly funny in a really long time. I'm thinking of things like span a lot and those kinds of shows and we haven't really had anything like that for a while obviously we've got book of mormon but i don't think anything that is in the same caliber as something rotten and i think it's really sad that it closed so early and i really wish that it would continue on over here i don't know if they did a u.s tour i'm presuming that they did i think a uk tour or something like that would be amazing and i think it's really sad that this seems to be a bit of a forgotten show because christian borrell singing hard to be the bard is iconic it's hard to be the bard, baby. <laughs> Okay, the next show that has probably been forgotten for some reason is Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. I have to say, there's a song in it, oh my god, what's it called, that I always listen to. I love the song Rise Above from Turn Off the Dark, but the rest of it was a bit meh for me. But it was a massive flop on Broadway, like the money that they spent and then they kept having people getting injured. It was a, uh, it was a whole thing. I remember it so vividly. I don't know, I never saw the show. Maybe it's good it was forgotten, but again, people put their heart and soul into it, so <laughs> I'm too soft for my own good. <laughs> I could never be a drama channel. <laughs> 
The next one is I Can't Sing, the X Factor musical. Now, who thought an X Factor musical would be a good idea? I don't know. The interesting thing is that Cynthia Erivo was in this show. Cynthia is now obviously like a Hollywood actor. I mean, girl has done so well. Like, she's damn talented. But this was one of her like first big roles in the UK. And she was that, she was the saving grace for that show. I mean, I remember watching them, I think it was on the Royal Variety performance. But, ooh, not a good show, not well written, not good music. I don't know. Interesting. Who calls a musical I can't sing? Who calls a musical I can't sing? And then has the lead person, Cynthia Erivo, who can sing insanely, singing a song called I Can't Sing. It makes no sense. <sighs> Another show that closed before its prime was Took Everlasting. It's a lovely little show. One of my favorite songs, Partner in Crime, is from it. You need a partner in crime. I really like Took Everlasting. And Michael Park was in it. And Andrew Keenan Bolger was in it. And those two men, I love. And I think it's a real shame that it closed so quickly. I watched lots of videos about it before it went to Broadway on Broadway.com. I was really, really hyped for it. And then it just seemed to close super quick. And that makes me sad. The next show that's kind of been forgotten is Finding Neverland. So it's based on the film, and I think Gary Barlow wrote the music, which is random as anything. I also love it. I love Finding Neverland. It's such a gorgeous show. The music is gorgeous. Like, oh, the story is so cute. And the cast recording is played hard in this house. I mean, I play that cast recording so often. I love Finding Neverland. It had a very strange life. I was thinking about doing a video on like scandals on Broadway. Let me know if you would be interested in that because I think that that could be really interesting and I'll go into the Find a Neverland thing deeper. But I think it's sad that Find a Neverland closed before its time. It didn't get any Tony nominations despite performing at the Tonys. Can we talk about that? And I think it's a shame because I love the show. I love Laura Michelle Kelly. Will Schuster was on Broadway. He finally made it. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think that's sad. And again, it never really had a life in England. I have a feeling that they did some tryouts with it in the UK, but then after it went to Broadway, it never came over to the West End. And that's so sad because I would have loved to have seen it. And again, I think British audiences would really enjoy it. A forgotten show that should not be forgotten. The next is Loserville. It's a show I never saw, but one that I heard was really fun. But I think it's really sad that it closed and there's just never really been anything since I, I think they did like an anniversary concert show thing of it but it never really took off in the way that it could have done and I think that's always a shame it was written by the guy from Busted I think but I remember when I came to London once, this was when I didn't live here, and they were handing out leaflets for it. And I was like, please, 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 can we see Loserville? I really, really wanted to see it because I thought that's very much up my street. And my parents wouldn't take me. And you know what? I've never forgiven them. But I think it's a shame that Loserville got forgotten and maybe we should all bring it back. Another show that I adore, I love it so much, is Eugenius. It's a show that had a run at the other palace and then it did a second run and then they were going to take it to the West End and then one of the investors pulled out. You know, it, it didn't make it to the West End. And since then it's kind of been forgotten but I think there is this core of like really strong fans who would love for it to come back. I'm definitely one of them. I loved Eugenius. I still listen to the music every time I go on a long car journey. It's always there in my long car journey playlist. And I named my cat Eugene. It's a great show. It's really fun. I just, I think if it had the opportunity to be pushed a little further, I think it could be huge. I feel like it's kind of the UK version of Be More Chill. And I wish that it had the same support that Be More Chill did because I actually preferred it to Be More Chill. Oh, I just loved Eugenia so much. And I think it's so sad that it's been forgotten. I'm sure, you know, obviously these shows haven't been forgotten completely, but what I mean by it is from the mainstream, it's not on the West End still. And I'm still over here like, woo, Eugenia. Genius, go Eugene. And then my final show that has been forgotten is SpongeBob SquarePants. Now, when I included this in my list, I'd forgotten that they've just put it on Nickelodeon. And I feel like that's given it a bit of a resurgence, but 
It is a show that closed prematurely because the Palace Theatre where it was on on Broadway was having a renovation, I believe. I think that's why it closed, but it didn't get a new theatre. And it closed and do you know what? When I went to New York, I, I didn't really want to see it. I saw it because people were like, yeah, I just gotta go to Broadway and see Mean Girls. And I was like, yes I am. But I'm also gonna show you that I have an open mind. So I went to see SpongeBob as well and I loved it. I thought that the set was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. Ethan Slater is insanely talented. Wesley Taylor was in it. I love Wesley Taylor so much. I love him from back in the Smash days. And then it closed. And I think that's so sad because it's such a great show. And I love that they just recorded it and put it on Nickelodeon because I have rewatched it twice now and I just think it's a show that should actually have more of a life. I don't know if, if it would be super popular in the West End. I can't really imagine it being so but yeah they are my forgotten shows of the last decade. I hope that you don't think I was just being bitchy for no reason and I hope that maybe these shows will have another life in the future. Maybe they're just on pause now but you know that's the beauty of theatre. There's a revival category of the Tonys for a reason. So, who knows? I hope that you've had an amazing decade. I hope that you've seen some amazing shows and I hope that you see some fantastic shows in the future as well. Please let me know what your forgotten shows of the last decade are and let me know if there's anything that you're excited to see in 2020 and beyond. To 2020 and beyond! Yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I love you lots, happy new year and sending you all the good wishes and the good vibes and all my love and have a good afternoon or a good evening or morning or whatever you're doing and I will see you soon. I love you lots. Bye!